morning, and thank you for joining us. I'm Lexi Cutmore, Communications Coordinator here at Arnett Health. So as part of our effort to better know the leadership here at Arnett and kind of understand their goals, we're sitting down with different leaders. I'm joined here today by Katherine Luxinger, Chief Nursing Officer here at Arnett Health. Um, would you mind just giving us a brief introduction, kind of telling us about yourself? Sure. Well, nursing is, is not my first career. Um, I started out as a physical education teacher and health instructor for grades K through 12. I was also the women's basketball and volleyball coach. I had a very good record. Um, but I always wanted to be a nurse, but I also wanted to participate in athletics, and I had a hard time choosing which one I wanted to do. So um, when I looked at having my summers off, weekends off, holidays off, I certainly didn't care for it and I wanted to find a job and get back and go back into healthcare where I, could, I knew I could work those nights and those weekends and those holidays and still make a difference in individuals' um, lives. I started out in the neonatal intensive care unit and um, from there I had great in, um, leaders who developed me into the leadership track, unbeknownst that I was even heading in that direction, and helped me uh, move me along the path of being a manager, director of women's and children's, and eventually became a chief nursing officer um, about 20 years ago. Speaking of becoming a chief nursing officer, what brought you to Arnett Health exactly? Well, I was experimenting with retirement and I found that myself I was bored and I, I missed it. I was still reading journals and keeping in, in um, touch with all of my nursing colleagues. And um, I had a recruiter to call me one day and asked me if, if I would help out a small hospital in New York. and. Um, I got more information and interviewed with um, people from the executive team at Arnett, and I and I really like what I heard. It was only supposed to be in like a three or four month stint, so I said sure, it would break things up for me. So um, I, they liked what they heard and and brought me on board. We obviously, you know, celebrate our nurses year round, their trials, their tribulations, how they get past that. What are some of the biggest challenges in nursing right now? As we come out of the, the virus season that we had with COVID, um, I think not only Arnett, but hospitals nationwide are starting to recover from the lack of resources that we had over the last couple of years. In nursing mainly, it is our registered nurses, LPNs, the aides, and our secretaries that we need to help us every day take care of our patients. That is probably where our biggest struggle is. However, I'd like to share, we're having a really good recruiting season and um, getting a lot of new grads will be coming in in May and June. And we're getting a lot of nurses that were agency nurses with Arnett over the last couple of years, but now they want to stay on as full-time employees. And it's really a testament to how these nurses feel that they're part of the team. So, you know, with new people coming in, what do they have to look forward to? What's new on the horizon? With, especially with new grads that are coming in, we have about, at least last count was about 31, 30, or 32 of them. We offer them extensive orientation. Um, and it varies depending on the area that they're going to. Some are shorter than others. However, all of them will go through a residency program where they will meet monthly with their cohort for the next year. And that will be the group that they can network with, grow up with, develop with, but um, we put them through a, a four-hour class um, at once a month um, just to refocus and um, reestablish some of that knowledge that they had in nursing school and now how they can assimilate it in, into the care of the bedside. Probably helps give them that additional comfort level. Very much, definitely. Definitely does. And it, it, um, it also prepares them, helps them start the critical thinking that they knew, need. They come in, they know the tasks. They know how to do the bedside tasks. We have to, we as leaders and educators need to p help them understand the why behind those tasks. So you've been working with Arnett on and off for around two years now. Correct, right. What makes you want to come in every day and do your job and show support for the entire hospital system and its staff? Well, Lexi, that's a great question because I, I think about it all the time in, in this career that I get to do every single day. Um, as I told you earlier, nursing is a second career for me. And um, not too long ago, I had a nurse colleague say to me that um, I used to be a teacher and a coach, 
He, and she said, Catherine, you're still teaching and you're still coaching. Your scoreboard is just different. And I have to agree with her every day. I look back at the people that developed me and moved me along in leadership. And um, for me, I do the, I'm trying to do the same thing. I'm trying to, um, um, I enjoy teaching. I enjoy developing people. I enjoy developing our future leaders. However, I would be remiss to leave out those nurses at the bedside. As a chief nursing officer, we don't know every aspect of healthcare in the hospital. We, we can't, it's just too big and, it, and we become too specialized. So I enjoy the nurses from at the bedside who I feel are the experts. Tell me, teach me what you're doing. Teach me about that new pieces of machinery equipment or share with me what do you need, what do you need in order to make your job easier and better and get that, that help that patient get better and, and get home with their family. So working with the staff is also kind of like a learning experience for you too. Absol absolutely, um, it's, it's teaching both ways. It's providing that, that feedback. I, I really love having the staff nurses at the table with me, sharing what we could do differently. I wanna hear their suggestions, get their feedback to make sure that we are on the, always on the cut, cutting edge of patient care. And since we're sitting down, just getting to know you, do you wanna share any hobbies or interests that you have? Um, I would love to. I am um, a Wisconsin native. I'm currently living in Phoenix, but um, used to the weather that New York has here. And because of the consequence of that, um, you can't live in the state of Wisconsin and not be a Packer fan. So I'm a Green Bay Packer fan, and I'm also an owner. As everyone should know, if they don't know, they'll know now that the Green Bay Packers are, o are owned by um, people, not one person or a billionaire. And um, I'm happy to say I have one share. It's not worth anything, but I get to go to the annual meetings um, that are held in July. But that's um, probably one of my proudest moments and I got it from my father. So it was pretty special to me. I also enjoy downhill skiing and I have two lovely yellow Labradors that, um, that takes, take me for a walk when I'm available. Getting the, um, that share of the Green Bay Packers from your dad is almost like a family heirloom. Oh, it, it is. And in turn, I have done it for my two grandsons. And yeah, my two grandsons both have their own shares now too. That's amazing. Yeah, it is. Well, Catherine, thank you so much for doing this. Thank you. Thank you for having me.